Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing off 121 Tricky Trials, the latest update for Minecraft, which includes this giant new structure you see behind me. So, without further ado, let's investigate what this update's about. First off, we have the structure itself. This is the Trial Chambers, a new common underground structure, which is jam-packed with a ton of new features. You can see here, a new type of spawner, there's going to be vaults around, and there's even going to be a second variant which gives you super OP items, potentially a weapon that can one-shot the warden. And you can see, they're quite large, which means you can definitely turn it into a base if you're willing to deal with all the near impenetrable blocks around. The tutorial will be linked in the top right. And when I say common, you're going to see these roughly every 32 chunks. So if I go all the way over here, what do you know? There's another trial chamber, and each one is going to be different. You're going to have a near unique experience every time, considering there are quite a few variants of each room, and then different layouts and all that. Not to mention, you can replay it, and it's very multiplayer compatible, which I'll be discussing shortly. For our basic gameplay of this structure, it all revolves around the trial spawner. This is a unique type of spawner, which takes 250 seconds to mine and does not drop anything, meaning you always want to leave it in the world. And then, you can see the mob inside. If I change myself into survival mode, it's going to activate. Notably, it has a lot of annoying subtitles. And now, you're going to have to fight off all these mobs. They come in different kinds of rooms, there's even two new mobs added with this update to make it all the more difficult and they'll come in different varieties. They'll have small melee, large melee, ranged, and then the breeze. The breeze is the big threat of this place despite dealing very little damage. And here, I got myself baked potatoes. While that isn't the treasure of choice you really want, it's still nice to have a little bit of food down here where there's typically nothing to eat. But occasionally, you'll get yourself a trial key. And these will stack I mean, look, 64, in case you ever wanted to go on a big spree of opening vaults. And then the amount of mobs and drops will scale based off of the amount of players playing, and so why it's multiplayer compatible. Now, if I walk up to a vault, every player can open this once. After that, they can never open the same vault again. But this does mean you can bring all your friends and give each one a key, and each one of you can open the vault per loot. Get an achievement for it and then you'll get some basic loot. Of course, there are various kinds of loot you can get. Some of them are exclusive to this structure though, but you can get diamonds, even a diamond block occasionally, enchanted armor, and a bunch of other treasures. It makes it a very good source of emeralds. While that was an ordinary hallway spawner, nothing very interesting, spawn slimes, and that's about it. Well, there are rooms. And each room will have its own unique challenge. Check all the hallways because there'll be doors leading to them. And this room in particular has both of the new mobs. Make sure to bring a bunch of blocks to this because you are going to have to do some parkour to navigate this place. And first off, we have the breeze. The breeze is basically a wind blaze. However, instead of being a super powerful threat, instead it is a knockback chaos machine. You can see, it will deploy redstone traps around the arena in order to mess with you. And while it might only deal half a heart of damage, or three quarters on hard, it's going to mess everything up with its knockback and flinging everything around, along with potentially messing up the arena with the power of redstone. So be sure to take them down. They only have 30 health, but they're immune to all projectiles. See, if I try shooting the breeze, it's going to send my arrow back at me. And what do you know, I got take aim by hitting myself. So, you're going to have to take these down, but they'll drop some very valuable items, namely the breeze rod, which can be used for incredible redstone contraptions in this update. But of course, might come at a cost because you have to deal with all these traps. So, now I have the breeze rod, and this is an important item, which I'll talk about when I'm done with this room. Now, for 121's other mob, the bogged, these will spawn in one third of trial chambers, and they are some of the most threatening mobs in the game. They have 16 health, and fire twice as slowly as a skeleton. They also spawn in swamps occasionally. But 
the real issue with them is what they shoot. They don't shoot normal arrows. They are going to shoot poison arrows. So even if you might think, oh, I have good armor, they're going to bypass it. You're going to have to use protection now. And especially with the fire protection, blast protection buffs, that's going to be quite the issue. Because of course, there's competition, and now you're going to be poisoned constantly. So you have to be incredibly careful while dealing with these mobs. Despite how slowly they fire, they are going to beat you up. So, one wrong move like that could easily be done for because of the poison. So, make sure you take them all down very quickly, or even cover up their trial spawners, since trial spawners will only activate if they have a direct line of sight. But fortunately, you'll occasionally get a regeneration potion to deal with these. Now, once you defeat all those mobs, you can open the vault if you get any keys. Of course, multiplayer can help with this, so make sure to do these with friends. And now, once you walk up to the vault, unlocking a bunch of them, here's the kind of loot you'll get. You can see, all these are relatively interesting items, mid-gear items, mainly um, basic diamonds, emeralds, enchanted iron, but you might have noticed some new items. The wind charge, which is going to be talked about with the new redstone mechanics, and then an ominous bottle, which allows you to bring the game up to the next level. If you drink an ominous bottle while in one of these trial chambers, then you're going to have the much more difficult ominous trial. And that is, well, quite difficult, I'm going to say that, because the mobs will become armored. However, there's a second usage. This is how you get Bad Omen now. Killing a pillager captain will drop one of these bottles instead. Drink these and walk into a village, then a raid will start in 30 seconds, which means a massive reduction in raid farm effectiveness, but much easier for the average player to deal with it. With your new ominous bottle in hand, whether it be from Vault or Pillager, it's now time to deal with the ominous trials. So, drink one of these, and now you have Bad Omen, which has a new a texture. Walk up here, and now the trials have begun. These mobs will spawn with armor, weaponry, and in larger quantities if they cannot use armor. So you can see, this can get overwhelming very quickly. Make sure to get yourself enchanted items, and some very good situational awareness with how many sounds are going to be playing at once. These monsters will not drop their armor though. Don't think you can get some free trimmed iron or diamond armor off these guys. But if you can defeat these guys, then you'll be able to get ominous keys for these ominous vaults, which are hidden about the place. Compared to the normal vaults, the ominous vaults are harder to open because their key has a lower drop chance. However, these vaults provide better loot, more diamonds, and instead of tridents, they'll provide heavy cores for the mace, along with some other valuable treasures that can be only gotten here. Go up to it and open it, and you'll see an enchanted golden apple, those are quite common from here, and some other items. And while this wasn't a very good roll, because how common enchanted golden apples are from these things, go. A mildly enchanted crossbow is always worthwhile, so if you want to take on this place for that, then who knows. But of course, there are some much more valuable treasures to be gotten from this place. Right here is every single unique treasure to the trial chambers. You can see how there are a few pots, the discs, two new armor trims you can have, and then the heavy core, along with Pixar of the mace back there. And each one of these can be valuable in their own right. Outside of decoration, of course, these vaults are going to provide a ton of different things, so that way you can enhance your journey. Of course, backlit mace, but the mace is the big thing you want from here. If you do not like building, then this is what you're here for. Grab yourself something strong like an iron golem, and then I'm going to finally unfreeze the game. Yeah, I had to do that for the thumbnail, but anyways the iron golem here and pull out my mace and then when I come down on it you can see it took a ton of damage this weapon scales off of how far you've fallen which means if you come from a very high height then you can deal incredible damage and this is the primary usage of the wind charge now if I charge up my mace use the wind charge what do you know dead iron golem 
You can use the mace in order to one-hit various entities. It's super good against the wither, and can even be used against a warden if you properly enchant it. While the rest of these things, of course, are the music, you can hear it in the backgrounds for some of the more active tracks and the music box tracks. Well, you have this thing, and this is what I'm going to be talking about for a while. This thing, the mace, can be gotten from ominous trial vaults, which means you're going to have to brave the super powerful mobs, and then it's one of the rarer items. If you try getting this from a normal vault to get around it, you're going to get tridents instead of the heavy core. One breeze rod plus a heavy core yields the mace, 500 durability, same damage as an iron sword, and on java edition, an attack 0.6 times per second, which means it's the slowest weapon in the game. However, this thing is super strong. You can see how I obliterated the iron golem in the beginning. Well, you can bring enchantments into the mix. There are three unique enchantments for the mace. Breach, which bypasses armor and is incompatible with density. Wind Burst, which can only be gotten from the fancy vault, and flings you after you use it, and then Density, which increases its damage based off of how far you've fallen. You cannot put Sharpness on it, you can put the other enchantments, but they're not compatible, so no Bane of Arthropods on this unless you don't care about Density. And then the Wind Burst is going to be gotten from the vaults. Now, to use this, go into Survival Mode. And you saw how I did it in the beginning, so let's skip straight to Wind Burst 1. This will fling you after you use it, but it only works on smash attacks. But you can combo these together in order to eliminate mobs in record speed. But if you missed a combo, you're going to start taking heavy damage. And this can be supplemented by super high levels of Wind Burst. Getting myself an Iron Golem, a second one. This is enchanted with maximum density and maximum wind burst, which means I'm going to go super high and one shot everything, including myself. So, do that, and what do you know, iron golem gone. And just like that, one hit an iron golem. However, you have to use a wind charge to land or any other method, or else you're going to be obliterated. But you saw, one hitting iron golems is quite a powerful tool. You can use this against a wither in order to take it down super easily. However, it doesn't quite work with Riptide, which means you're going to have to get at least one normal hit in first or a very tall tower. With that incredibly powerful item with a little bit of risk to it out of the way, it's now time for the potions added in this update. And these are Wind Charging, Weaving, Oozing, and Infestation, gotten from Breeze Rods, Cobwebs, Slime Blocks, and Stone respectively. And these are going to be spawned by the ominous spawners, since they'll summon projectiles around them in order to make your life even more chaotic. Summoning down a breeze, I'm going to hit it with all of these at once. And you can see, it will deflect the potions, but it's not immune to the effect, kind of like an enderman. So each one of these is a negative potion. Wind charging makes a wind charge upon death. Weaving creates cobwebs upon death and gives it a increased movement speed in cobwebs, which means it's kind of a 50-50. Oozing makes it spawn slimes upon death, and infestation makes it spawn silverfish at a random chance when hit. Now, if I kill it, you can see a cobweb, slimes, and then a wind charge in order to do all the chaos. And while it's a little bit harder to see infestation, so if I splash it down and then start punching repeatedly, occasionally, you can see, I'll have some of those, but these are actually quite useful. You can make a cobweb farm, making them renewable, and a slime farm, utterly killing the slime farm industry because it's more effective to use a potion on a guardian farm. Kill it again, you can see a little bit of chaos happens over there. It also provides a little bit of extra usage to knockback, but I'm not a big fan of the enchantment. But if you do like the enchantment, what do you know? Now you can launch those effects away from you in order to make trial chambers up just a little bit easier. Next up are the interactions the wind charge has, the real reason why you want to get these. Besides very advanced things that not even I know how to do, that involve flinging yourself with hundreds of wind charges in one spot, here's what the wind charge does besides flinging you. It activates redstone. You can use this repeatedly in order to create interesting PvP arenas. Along with that, it can activate the crafter, the newest block for redstone here, besides a copper bulb. 
And what's important about this block is it allows you to automatically craft things with a redstone signal. And on top of that, you can disable slots in order to get different items. Now, with proper hopper placement, you can craft almost anything in the whole game using your crafter. You can even craft crafters with crafters using only hoppers it seems, which makes this one of the best redstone blocks so far. You can turn your iron farm into an iron block farm, which is a massive storage improvement and will help drastically, so be sure to incorporate this into any farm you can. Now, wrapping up this section of the video about the major changes, here are all of our new blocks. Two new banner patterns, then Tuff has now gotten a whole block set around it, then three new pots, the crafter, some new copper blocks, we have the spawners and vaults, although those ones are not necessarily obtainable in survival, and then we have the heavy core, which is exclusively used for crafting the mace, and otherwise is a useless item. And then there is something else, of course notice the game is frozen, a bunch of new paintings. The original painter has come back, along with a new artist who did this painting, and then these four right here, but the original artist did the rest of these. This also means that there are now 3x3 three three paintings and 3x4s, along with more than one variant of both 2x2. Two two. Well, there are already more of those, I meant 2x4, but anyways, you can see a bunch of new paintings for you to use in your survival or creative building worlds. With all this in mind, these are the major changes of this update, but quite a few more have been added. Fire protection and blast protection have been buffed immensely. Although they were initially nerfed for stacking, it turns out the developers found out through the community that they were kind of weak. Now, equipping two pieces of fire protection makes it so fire tick doesn't work on you, as in the moment you step out of fire or lava, you no longer take damage. And then blast protection at two pieces, both enchanted with blast protection 4, makes you completely immune to explosion knockback which means you're going to be able to handle end crystal PvP a lot better if you ever deal with that. Hence, it's going to be quite interesting to see how all the community will react to these changes. For the rest of our changes, we have mostly bug fixes, although there's a pretty cool thing now. Data-driven food is now a thing. Along with that, a bunch of new tags have been added. What this means is data packs in Java Edition are that much stronger. Along with that, Fire Aspect now applies on sweeping attacks, which means everything hit by the sweep will now be set aflame, which makes the enchantment much more powerful. Although this might come at a cost because, as I keep mentioning Guardian Farms for some reason, this is going to cause everything you get from a Guardian Farm to be cooked, which might be an issue. Along with that, you're now able to put entities through portals even if they have a passenger, which means you can ride your thing through the portal. Want to bring a horse to the nether? Well, now you can, and there's not even a delay. You can do this with any portal in the game now. If you ever have a custom dimension, you probably will be able to bring your animal through with you. Which means, well, better animal accessibility. While there are numerous changes that could be here for about 2 hours and 40 minutes describing, this is all you really need to know about the update, although as you play the game, you're likely to notice quite a few different things. And lastly, because I completely forgot somehow, how you find trial chambers is through cartographers. Every cartographer at level 3 has a pretty high chance, I believe it's 2 thirds, to give you a map for one of these. It will track the closest trial chamber. And you're probably going to have to visit several different villages if you ever want to get all the music discs for the trial chambers. But still, hey, you now have an explorer's map for the underground structure. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day in the new update, which will be coming out tomorrow on the day of release. Gearsaw out.